Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to talk about the exec functions in the OS module. There are like nine of them, eight of them, there are a bunch of them. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk about what the difference between exec and subprocess is. And without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, <laughs> button work that time. Uh, so this came up on my stream. I was demoing a little project that I just created because I've been super frustrated with the AWS command line. Um, let me just demo that really quickly. Uh, with the AWS command line, if you use dash dash help, it gives you this super useful output that it doesn't know about the help option. And it in, in fact wants you to do AWS S3 space help to open up the help, which I find a little bit obnoxious. So I made this tool called AWS help, and this is AWS help.py. That's the entire source, it all fits on there, cool. And um, with AWS help, you can do alias AWS equals AWS help. Once you have it installed, I already have it installed because of course I already have it installed. Um, and now if you do AWS S3 dash dash help, which I you know forget about AWS's shortcoming quite often here, um, and now it just works, which is kind of cool. It's a, it's a nice little drop-in for the AWS command and you know prints out a little message that <laughs> it's a little tongue-in-cheek. Uh, but anyway, that's beside the point. The, the point of today is uh, I'm using exec VP to run the AWS command, um, although sometimes I'm using set process on Windows. And we'll talk about that a little bit in a second. And the question is, what is the difference between exec and sub process? In order to show you that, uh, I'm going to be using the PS, uh, PS tree command, which I did a video on that, so I'll link the PS tree command in the description below. Uh, I guess we'll also use watch to show you as well. Um, but let me find this process first. PS, EF, grep, Python 3, probably this one. PS tree dash help that. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, we can actually use the parent process ID so you can see the bash process that, you know, this is the shell that's running this Python process. It's not super important here, but, you know, it gives you a better tree. Um, but anyway, first I want to show you what sub process looks like. Uh, import sub process, process dot call. Uh, let's just call sleep five, for instance. Actually, let's do 10 because I'm going to have to talk a little bit. And you'll notice while the sleep is running, it is a child process of the Python process. So it is, you know, a separate sub process there. And, uh, you know, it is, it's spawned as a sub process. And when it's done, it goes away, of course. Now, exec, which has, uh, I'm going to use the VP <laughs> form of exec. Pick one that you know how it works and use that one. I particularly use VP because I like its calling construct, although there are, there are different exec functions and sometimes you might need to use one of the other ones. Uh, but they live in the OS model and the exec VP function, help os.execvp, uh, takes a file. <laughs> oh, interesting. That's cool. It looks like the help function invokes sh-c pager. I'm kind of surprised that it uses a subshell here. That's interesting. Uh, but anyway, it runs it runs the pager uh, to show the help output here. Um, but it takes the name of an executable, uh, which will be looked up on the path, and then the path arguments that it um, that it runs after that. So I usually do something like this, where I will build the arguments. So the command is going to be sleep ten, and then I run uh, os dot execvp command zero, and then command, and this will run that command. Now you'll notice here, before I run the command, we're currently running the Python 3 process, which is the subprocess of bash. Uh, but what exec does is it replaces the current process that you're running. And you'll see now that I've run this, you'll see the Python process has turned into the sleep process. Um, and this is a, you know, a POSIX specific thing. Uh, exec actually doesn't really work on Windows, uh, which I guess I'll show you that right now. If we, oops. We open up command prompt and we open up Python um, and we do import OS and we again make our command. Uh, for the sake of discussion, I'm going to use bash dash C exit one uh, just because I know this should exit one. Um, so if it doesn't exit one, there's some problem going on here. And if we do this and we do OS dot exec VP, same as before, command zero command. Uh, this, you know, if I were running this on POSIX, it would replace out the current process with a bash-c process, and uh, that process would exit one, and so my process would exit one. 
However, on Windows, what it does is <laughs> if we echo uh, error level, this will be the previous return code of the previous command. If we echo error level, you'll see that it returns zero, which is different than one. Uh, and this is because exact on Windows does the following thing. It spawns a subprocess. So first, it, it doesn't replace the current process. It spawns a subprocess and then immediately exits zero. Like, just tears down the current process <laughs> to kind of simulate, you know, like replacing the current process. Uh, so, you know, the exact flavor of functions on Windows are completely useless, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and so in AWS Help, I make sure to not use um, the os.execvp function if I'm running on Windows. So I'm, I make my own little stub function here that ignores the first argument and just does subprocess.call with the rest of the arguments. And I only do that on Windows. That's why you know, I kind of switched the two there. Uh, because Windows uses a, a spawn type instead of a uh, subprocess type. Anyway, that's the difference between the two. Now, the reason that I picked execvp over subprocess is subprocess is going to create a new process, and creating a new process can be expensive, uh, whereas replacing the current process is significantly cheaper. So, I tend to prefer execvp over subprocess if I if I'm you know I no longer need to do work in the parent process, the subprocess can just take over. So the the replaced process can take over. But anyway, that's kind of the differences between execvp and subprocess and why I chose to use execvp, as well as why it doesn't work on Windows. Uh, but if you have additional things you haven't explained, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.